Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's sitting down to the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you with the Let's Play episode of Repeat Remake Sissel's Path. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. Feeling horrible doesn't make up for anything. I'd rather be cheering and screaming for you at the competition instead. Try not to scare the other contestants while you're there. Oh, you better watch out. Those fuckers are just as bad as those backstabbing shits from the local tournament, if not worse. You'll be happy that I'm there to kick their asses if they try anything. Huh. <laughs> then I guess I've got nothing to worry about. Herschel suddenly tapped Sissel's shoulder, his eyes gazing out over the distant night air. Sis, look. It's starting. Fireflies began blanking, blanketing the lake surface like tiny little stars, the reflections dancing on the still water surface. Sissel had seen this view countless times before, but tonight it felt especially beautiful. The two of them watched the little flickering lights for several long moments before Sissel began wringing his hands, his gaze falling to his feet. You nervous, Sis? It's a bit weird. I've never done this kind of thing before. Never had anyone to pay respects to. Like, am I doing any of this right? Herschel breathed at a laugh. It's not that serious, kiddo. Relax. Just take some time to think of your mom. Uh, think of the things you wanted to know. <clears throat> Sorry, no. Think of the things you'd wanted to know, and the stuff you don't want left unsaid. That kind of thing. Cicel inhaled deeply and stepped forward, and then immediately stepped back. You go first. You've known her longer than I have. Heesh, you get uh, you getting shy on me? This is new territory for me, okay? Herschel laughed and then stepped forward his eyes transfixed on the little dancing lights in the night. He was quiet for a long time, silently embracing the atmosphere, letting his mind roam freely. After a breath, he spoke. Hey, Cecilia. I miss you. And I'm sorry for causing so much trouble when I was younger. Things might have been different if, if he had just been a little better at, well, everything. Uh, but you're probably tired of hearing me marinate in self-pity and feeling horrible about myself at this point. It's high time I started moving on. I've been blessed with uh, having a, my nephew back, and the debts our parents saddled with us are finally settled. There's so much left to do in life outside of wallowing in past mistakes. I just want you to know that you won't have to worry anymore. I'll be moving forward with my head held high. Herschel paused and smiled. I'm gonna live. He spoke those words slowly, as if it was a novel, as, as if it was a novel concept. I think this is a part where your sister heckles you for being a big sap. Herschel barked at a laugh. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Now it's your turn to sap it up. Come on. You got this, kiddo. Sissel stepped forward with a small smile. The toes of his shoes touching the water's edge. He watched the thousands of little golden flicks of light dance across the night sky. He wondered if the stories were true and his mom could truly hear him. He wondered what she'd think of him now. Hey, Mom. I, um, I've never been good with talking about my feelings. I've gotten better, you know, since Adrian grabbed me by the neck and dragged me out, out of my constant moping sessions. Hmm. Man, y'all, it's almost been a year since we moved into our new apartment. Man, I'm, but I'm still kind of bad at it, so I wrote a letter instead to help me with my thoughts. He took a small piece of paper out of his pocket. It was folded into the shape of a small paper boat. He fiddled with it nervously. Back when I was still learning to read, a uh, teacher would tell me stories of how people would send messages and bottles out to sea. As a kid, I always wondered if I could do the same and if I wrote letters to my parents, if my words could reach them. Except I had no bottles, because they were expensive. So I'd float little paper boats out across the lake instead. He sighed. Which was a pretty stupid idea, because this is a tiny little lake. But the thought was still there. Herschel chuckled softly. Cecilia would have thought it was very cute. She'll be relieved to know that her son is not cute and turned out to be very punk rock. But I figured it was worth continuing this little tradition. It's nice to know who to address my letters to now. Cecil kneeled by the shore and set the little paper boat across the water. He watched as slowly the waves embraced his folded letter and carried it out into the lake. It sailed across the night, 
its reflection joining the thousands of shimmering lights dancing across the water's mirror surface. Sissel took a deep breath, quietly searching for the right words. Hey, Mom. He broke into a soft laugh, suddenly realizing how silly he sounded. He kept talking anyway. I've always felt like there was someone watching over me here at this lake. Just a weird feeling I had, and now I wonder if it was you. Did you see me scurrying about, trying to survive? Were you watching me descend into moping sessions, feeling like I didn't deserve anything? He chuckled under his breath. I must have worried you sick. But I've gotten better. I've had a great teacher and learned how to read and write, and I found friends who stick by my side through all kinds of crazy trouble. I found a boyfriend who can read me like a book and gives me what I need before I even realize it. And I found my uncle, my family. He gazed at the little golden lights reflected in the water. Before this whole mess, I felt like I had to prove myself to be worthy of anything. I felt horrible any time someone tried to help me or be kind to me because I believed I didn't deserve it. It was a terrible way to live. Each day felt like a test I had to fight in order to earn all the good things that my friends gave me. He smiled. But recently, I realized something. I found people who love me, and I love them too. And maybe that's enough. For the first time in my life, I... I think I'm going to be okay. And I want you to know that. I want you to know that I'll be okay. That I'm good. That I'm in good hands, and you don't have to worry about me anymore. Sissel breathed out a sigh as, he ge as a genuinely happy smile spread across his face. I'm going to be okay. Sissel felt a chill in the air and blinked. A gentle, cool sensation wrapped around his hands gingerly holding them in its grasp. His heart lurched painfully in his chest, but he could not pinpoint why. He peered out across the lake and could almost swear he saw a familiar presence smiling back. Glancing over his shoulder, he caught a glimpse of Herschel's awestruck face. Apparently, he wasn't alone. Sissel squeezed his hands around the gentle presence in his grasp. A deep, bittersweet wave of comfort washed over him for a reason he could not explain, and suddenly tears were threatening to well in his eyes. The surface of the lake rippled as a quiet song wailed through the cold night air. Sissel. Your mother's time in this world was short, but even in the end she wished for nothing but the best for you. For both of you. I have tried my best to uphold her wish throughout the years in this lonely lake. To look after you. To keep you safe and to keep you happy. However, I always feared that I was never quite up to the task. It was a quiet laugh. After all these years to hear that you're both well is a great relief. And you're right. You two will be okay. Even without me. Underneath the veil of midnight hair, the strange figure smiled. This wish's duties have come to an end. Thistle's breath hitched as he felt two ghostly arms, as light as a feather wrap around him and Herschel, pulling them close. Long last, Sicilian, I can finally rest. A shy, quiet laugh echoed through the air. I... I hope I was a good wish. And before I go, I want you both to know... Cecilia loved you so much. And while we may be gone, her love for you will never fade. Be well, both of you. And then she was gone. Sissel and Herschel stood alone at the lakeside, the water still once more. They stared out into the night for several long minutes, hoping to catch one last glimpse of that comforting figure. But they were met only with the golden shimmer of fireflies. The floodgates suddenly burst. Sissel felt the tears welling at the edge of his vision pour down his face as he rasped out a shaking sob. He tried to hold himself steady, but the tears kept coming. In spite of it all, he stood tall and held his head high. Sissel kept whispering into the night. One last phrase and one last promise. I'm gonna be okay.
The walk back to the Gerania campus was silent. When they arrived at the school's front doors, they both just stood there for a while before Sissel pulled Herschel into a tight hug. Herschel chuckled as he held his nephew close to his chest. <clears throat> You're gonna be fine, kid. I know. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Well, things are good. Just feelings, you know? The school door slammed open and they suddenly found themselves ambushed as Jenny, Philip, Philip, Owen, and I dashed out to meet them. Uh, Adrian, what are you guys doing here? Took you guys long enough. We were convinced you were eaten alive by, mos by mosquitoes at the lake. Herschel coughed and, and glanced at a growing bump he couldn't quite reach as but reached with his bandaged arm. I mean, you're not too far off. What have you kids been up to? I marched up to Sissel with a grin and showed a lumpy, badly wrapped package into his shoved a lumpy, badly wrapped package into his hands. Surprise! We went out shopping and got you some new clothes for the tournament. And I also have and also a brand new chef uniform, so you don't have to use Herschel's old hand-me-downs. No offense to Herschel, but you're like three sizes too small for him. I think Sissel already looks hot in his usual tank top, very punk even. Probably hotter with that clothes, but I figured you'd appreciate more fashion options. Sissel looked stunned as he rolled, as he rolled the crinkled package in his arms. The whole thing was rather hefty. It was obvious it contained at least a dozen different articles of clothing, maybe enough to fill a wardrobe. <laughs> you didn't have to. I laughed and shrugged. Of course we didn't, but we wanted to anyway. It's fine. Uh, Owen came as our wallet. Ginny helped, helped pick the outfits, and Philip spent the whole time scrolling for coupons on his phone. Savings are nice. And you deserve nice things. You're not going to go on a whole spiel about how you're not worth it, are you? Because I've gotten very good at distracting your mouth. Cecil caught himself and let out a grateful laugh. Guess I'll have to say thank you like a normal person. And promise to kick ass at the tournament as repayment. That's the spirit. Jean let out a triumphant hurrah and began shoveling, shoving Cecil towards the door. Hurry up and go try on your new clothes. we got to make sure they fit before we leave for our flight later. Right now? Yes, right now. Come on, go, 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 go. Everyone stood outside Sissel's dorm room, buzzing with excitement to see his new outfits. Except me, of course. I was inside his room because of his because of boyfriend privileges. Sissel peeled off his ragged tank top and smiled as he ran his fingers through the new clothes. Huh. You even got me a small mountain of new underwear, too. And a bunch of hoodies. These are all so nice. I've never had so much to choose from before. Is this all because I looked a little glum when I was packing my bag this morning? Nah, I've been meaning to get you something nice to celebrate anyway. It seemed like a good fit. Like I said, you deserve nice things. Although, I won't complain if you decide to keep going commando. I grinned and hugged him from behind, nuzzling my face into his neck. He sighed and leaned back against me. Remind me again what I did to deserve you? Well, it started on one faithful on one faith, fateful day when you dropped your wallet at my feet. I returned it, our fingers touched, and sparks flew. Later that afternoon, I fed you a sandwich and the rest was history. I distinctly remember acting like an absolute twat that day. Weren't you still trying to be punk rock back then? Excuse you, I still am punk rock! Someone rapped at our door impatiently. Are you two fucking in there? Changing two pieces of clothing shouldn't take that long. Sissel and I both jumped inside. Cock blocked once again. I'm gonna pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all if I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you, silver tier patron Kate Silver, and thank you, going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks to our two gold tier patrons, Zeke and Toby. Y'all are awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye!